Well, hello again, <laughs> everyone. Welcome to the Groomers Cut. Um, I am here taking over for Dara while uh, she has some power issues. I am joined by Mindy and Chrissy um, today, and we'll be speaking about um, taking care of some of the changes adult dogs may go through that we can't we can't um, account for, like divorces. Um, a new baby, something changing in the environment, weather related, um, a stressful move. And how do we work with an animal that is going through that and making sure that with their chaotic life, we still give them a good experience with grooming? Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> For the second try. <laughs> um, I know myself, um, I've been taking a lot of courses in behavior and there's a lot of things that, you know, little things that you don't even think of as like divorce. I didn't think about the difference of divorces and the effect of a pet parent being home and then all of a sudden not there. You know, that's a big thing that I- Or going I, back to work. Oh yeah, going back to work, especially- that's what's a lot happening of, for a lot of our puppies right yes, now. Yes, yes, a lot of the puppies yeah. here. Um, so we're here to just work with and how to give the dog the best care. Well, and I think, um, so sometimes the adults too, um, we kind of start thinking that like, oh, they're adults now, so they know it. But, you know, adults need help too. You know, they don't necessarily um, understand when we get new tools. Like right. They can be really rigid. Um, as an example, like I have border collies, they will pick up on a pattern and just think that that's the way life yeah. is, you know, right. when you buy a new tool and they're like, whoa, new tool, you know? And I think that we kind of forget, we, we kind of assume that an old, an adult dog is going to be like, oh, I know this. And so many of them are, I mean, most of the time they are, they're like, hey, I understand what's going on, but you get a new tool or a new employee or change the order that you do something in. Um, right. you know, like, oh, you do front feet first, then back feet. And the dog's like, oh, you did it wrong. It's going to be very literal. <laughs> right. which, is a, which is a good point. I didn't think about switching the, uh, even the style of uh, just your order of things. That's a very yeah. valid point. Yeah. A lot of them are really thrown off by that. Um, I talked to my owners about, it's almost like, um, when you give a little kid a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that's been cut the wrong way and they lose their minds, you know, they're like, it's, it's inedible now. It's in squares, not triangles, squares, not triangles, you know? Yeah. I can <laughs> totally relate. Some of our relate. dogs are like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. some of our dogs are like that. They're like, whoa, we don't do front feet first, you know, or, you know, that's the wrong dryer, wrong dryer, you know? Right, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that even as adults, you know, I just think that they don't understand our world as fully as we kind of expect them to sometimes, you know, um, even as adults, they, they're kind of, you know, understanding most of it, but not all of it, you know? Right. right. And uh, the more we change things up, like my, like I said, I have border collies, like, I don't have the same thing every day for them because I don't want them to think that their world is a pattern and rigid because it would very easily turn into, you know, dogs that can't adapt. You know, I, yeah. I intentionally wipe their feet differently just about every single time I bring them in from the rain. <laughs> kind of like, you know, they, if you have a routine when you come home the dog knows the routine too mm -hmm. but if you change up the routine and say you know you usually come in and take your coat off and then say hi to the dog but you've got something on your mind and you come right in the door don't take off your coat don't acknowledge the dog dog's like wait a minute what's going on right you know, right they're, right they're they're they are very um schedule oriented Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And they pick up on patterns that we might not even notice that we do. 
Mm -hmm. Right. You know? A dog that you always groom in the morning, you may not even realize is thrown off by being groomed in the afternoon. Right, right. And I would like you to uh, say hi to Sydney and Groomer Jen. And thank you for um, always listening and watching. And Groomer Jen. I have uh, Groomer Jen is saying that she likes to switch it up sometimes just because it's what the dog prefers. And um, she's saying, however, um, you should be adding good grooming notes because sometimes it can make a difference with the behavior of the dog, which is very important, keeping notes very clear. So if a dog likes, I want my front paws first, then the back, then you can groom my ears. It should be right. like that for everyone who's grooming the dog. That's a very valid point. Thank you. Mm. Yes. So, um, yeah, and I think also, I think sometimes with the adults, we kind of start thinking that if they're afraid of something, they've missed the window of opportunity to learn how to be good with it. But right. that's not really the case. Um, a healthy dog can be le can learn to be safe, you know, and to and to handle the situation that we're throwing at them. The thing is, is that sometimes as they get a little bit older, they start having some health problems. Um, but we can we can still work with them, especially like here in the Northeast. So many of our dogs are coming from rescue. So we're we're meeting these dogs at four years old, five years old, eight years old, mm -hmm. 10 years old. You know, it's not like the window of opportunity has passed. And um, I still find some of that old school thinking like, oh, if only they had taught him when he was a puppy. It's so much easier to teach them when they're puppies. But we can teach an adult dog. Absolutely. Right. You know, right. So many things happen. And I actually find that at five years old, about five years old, a lot of adult dogs haven't learned anything new in a while and they really like it. You know, like they, they're sort of like, ooh, fun. It's like when we join a book club or pick up a hobby. <laughs> they're like, wow, something interesting's right. happening in my life. <laughs> I get right, to learn right. something new. <laughs> I mean, I, I picked up knitting. I mean, that well, yep. crocheting, I should say. You know, oh, yeah. but um, yeah, you're absolutely right. And um, I would like to know with some of our uh, viewers as well, what are some things that you notice when a pet parent comes in and just says, hey, I just had a family loss and- My oh. husband's a trainer Hi. also. I, I just heard you say something about the, the, the puppies, you know, we teach older dogs. I just have to say, anybody that says a puppy is easier to teach has not taught very many puppies. I know, right? They have a five second attention span. I'd rather have the old dog that really wants to, like you said, like, give me some treat, give me something to do. Right, okay, right. I feel like I need to defend that. I was just saying that it is easier to teach them from the very beginning that grooming is safe and yeah, fine. And, and I, and I versus, get that yeah, yeah. And you're right. It's, 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 yeah. it's a little bit more, it's an audience. Oh, yeah. If you lay like five pound puppy, there's a, a right. five pound adult. Their, oh, yeah. their yeah. attention span is like, oh, you want me to sit? We scroll. Yeah. <laughs> well, we tell Let's start and then they, the then they take a nap and they're, yeah. <laughs> they've forgotten everything. <laughs> yeah, I do wish everybody would. They always ask me, when should you start training? But when should I start training my puppy? I said, you already have. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely yep. right. You already have. The day they, they yep. popped out, guess what? They're already being trained. Who was doing it, though? Yeah. But they're I, learning every minute. Right, I just right. hate my hero. Old dogs can't be trained. We once had a a fourteen year old bloodhound come through, and do the first training of her life ever. It was my boss's old dog. That dog was the best dog in the class, and she she just had a blast because she was finally getting to do something, like you said. Right. Well, right. I think I think the adults are really fun to to teach because for many of them, they haven't learned anything new in a while. Yeah. And like I said, it's like picking up a new hobby. They're like, oh, it is. sometimes I get called in because I do training also. Sometimes I get called in to work with like the youngest dog in the house. And I'm like, oh, we're working with all of them. And yeah. the adult dogs are like, they're excellent. I can do sits and downs. And, you know, like, yeah, they have fun. Yeah, they do. They, they, they get into it. And they, I think they get forgotten about a lot. So, well, okay. <laughs> come on, go back out to my thing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure thank meeting you. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he actually um here lately because some of our difficult dogs i've been having him jump in and it's like come in and help me with this dog i you know tired of fighting it and you know so he 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 comes in and jumps in and helps nice very That's nice awesome. yes. but yeah. I'm sorry. I'm playing mad scientist here as as we do this. <laughs> <laughs> We're leaving I, for Tacoma tomorrow, and I've got to get his my dog's um, 
saying I and the I've or I've seen stuff together yep. for right, right, right. bad qualities there. Yeah, no, that's funny. Don't, don't worry about it at all, please. Um, and so I want to um, ask some of the viewers out there, um, what are the what have you found that's worked um, as far as getting dogs comfortable when they experience something, uh, um, a change in their life as a, a family passing and um, or a, a, a new baby per se. Um, I, I do notice when there's a new, a new baby in the house, the pet kind of gets pushed aside. Yeah. You know, so yeah. when when you see this dog, they I feel like most of them are craving. First of all, you're giving me attention. And holy cow, I haven't had attention in a while, yeah. you know, and or they're over obsessed with this baby because they see mom and dad so over obsessed with this new, you know, infant. They feel they yeah. have to be the same way. Well, so I would like to know some so, inputs. Uh, oh, go ahead, Mindy. My the thing that I notice is that most of the time the parents don't think about this stuff so they don't tell you so you don't find out until you get it on the table and this dog is like you're like what is up with this dog it's never acted like this mm -hmm. and then you talk to him and you say you know has anything changed well no everything's the same anybody come to visit anybody you know did anybody go on vacation did you know and you start listing off, oh, well, yeah, this, you know, I had yeah. a friend come and visit for like three days. Are they right. repaving your road? Have there been jackhammers for four days? Right. I had a customer who didn't even think twice about like having me do house call with jackhammers out front. I'm like, oh, no, 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 that's not a good idea. <laughs> you know, the amount of stress of having things like that happening is crazy. Yeah. I mean, Yes. Chrissy, um, she was with me. We had this dog that uh, particularly was really being careful for around the neck and it was actually lunging and biting every time we got to the neck. We couldn't wash the neck. We couldn't dry the neck. And it's it's out of character for the dog. And when we spoke with the uh, pet parent, we're like, did <laughs> Chrissy already know? You're like, a little seemed a little bit worried about his neck today. Right. Did anything happen? And he goes, oh, he got hit by a car yesterday. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. And I mean, the vet says he's fine. What? Yeah. <laughs> but I called the vet. The vet said he's fine. Never once did he mention, and yeah. we are very specific, anything new, any health issues or anything. And that's all the questions we ask in, you know, yeah. before we even take the dog in. I would think getting hit by a car was something new. You know, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and had I known any of that, I probably would have said, no, we're not, not probably, I would have said it is not okay to groom him today. <laughs> well, and just like last week, I had a dog come in that, you know, still had stitches from being fixed. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Um, I can't, well, I can't do anything with the dog while she's still got stitches. I said, we need to go out about a week after the stitches come out before we can do anything. And he's like, oh, I, you know, I just didn't even think about it or anything. Right. Like, okay. The dog just had surgery. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, and I think about going out and, and, you know, having to stand for two hours at, uh, you know, a week after surgery. <laughs> I know. Right. And I think that, um, uh... Even when we're asking all of those questions for a lot of owners, they're like, blah, 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 buying a haircut, you know, mm -hmm. like, and, and like, OK, we're going to ask your dog to do an awful lot of stuff that you don't usually do at home. And it's exhausting, yeah. you know, and yeah. the adults, yeah. especially like I think that, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about like the, the puppies and the adolescents and stuff get tired, but the adults get tired, too. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, it's there's a reason why these show dogs have chin rests and stuff that they can hang out and, you know, relax when they're being prepped for show. I mean, it's exhausting. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a squirmer. I know myself. If you ask me to stand still, if there's a party and everyone's in the kitchen and standing around, like I'm leaning on stuff, I'm squirming around. I can't stand still. I totally relate to these dogs that can't stand still. Right. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, it's quite amazing. Um, what the owners won't tell us when it comes to adult dogs, because you have 
the puppy stage and the the older dogs, you know, the senior dogs, mom and dad will spend hours speaking to you about all the little things. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then everyone forgets about the adult. Oh, here you go. You know, it's it's Toto. He's you know, he's he's been groomed multiple times, minus the getting hit by a car or he had surgery, you know, two months ago, or you know, <laughs> we had a fire. I had a dog who actually was in a fire three days prior to grooming. And the reason I knew is because the dog smelled like smoke, <laughs> you, you know? And it's yeah. one of those things. I'm like, this poor dog is petrified. Yeah. Well, and I think too, that we, um, we sometimes forget that like stuff like that can happen at any time. Like yes. there's always some weird random stuff happening. And then owners are like, well, you know, but he's been groomed like his whole life by you. It's like, yeah three years or something, you know, <laughs> like, and, and that might seem like a ton of time, but you know, he's going to change over time. You know, they, they don't stay the same. Right. And, um, you know, some of what we do is exhausting. Some of it is just really tedious. Um, we also like, once they're adults, that's when they might start limping a little bit. Like groomers always, you know, are one of the first people to find something new or something different. Like, Hey, look at the skin. Look what's going on over here, you know, and uh, we we tend to notice all those little changes. But to expect them to, oh, you're an adult now. There's no more worries, you know. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Or if they switch groomers. And sometimes that's just a matter of I have different equipment or do mm-hmm. things differently, you know, or, you know, switching groomers or they go down south every winter and come back and, you know. Yep. Yep. And I, whenever they switch, you know, I get somebody that's an older dog that's been groomed before. I tell them, I say, you know, it may take a couple of um, grooms just for them to get acclimated to the way we do things, you know, and I explain right. it to them right off the bat when they, they say, well, they've been to another groomer and, you know. It, I tell it, them that when they switch to house call. I'm like, they're like, oh, he'll be more comfortable in his house. I'm like, well, let's talk about it first because your dog might not be more comfortable in his house. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. yeah. you know, sometimes that house is the safe, their safe spot. And now you've got somebody coming in and invading their safe spot, doing mm-hmm. things they don't like. Or they think that they have to monitor the house's safety. So they're on a table thinking, I can't get to the yard. I can't bark at the mailman, you know, and they're anxious and worried and circling around and. Yeah. You know. Or it's just so weird. <laughs> right, right. Right. Yeah. Um, Rumor Jen is writing some stuff. Oh, okay. So she says that um the dogs predict her next move because she follows the same routine every visit. Yeah, I like that. Sometimes I vary and the dog corrects me. Yep. <laughs> and thank them for reminding you. Good. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, I do that too. Like if I tell them like left front foot and I reach for the right front foot, I have a bunch of dogs that'll balk. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You said left front. <laughs> you know? yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, and that uh, the acknowledgement is important because dogs are always trying to tell us when something is wrong. Yeah, it's important to pause and observe what the dog is communicating. And like Mindy said, call the owner and ask. Say where you are at that point in the groom and what you are observing. And then then ask, do you want me to continue or advise that we shouldn't if it's developing into something unsafe? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I I agree. Clients always appreciate it. Sometimes the client remembers something by the time they return to pick up. Mm -hmm. So many problems can be avoided if we become um, more um, conversational with our owners. You know, talk to our people, you know, find out what's going on. I've noticed... um... I've created myself a checklist of questions that I made sure I kept asking until I memorized it and I no longer need the checklist, you know, and it's, and I've incorporated, you know, has, how was he in the right in? Cause sometimes I, um, another thing I had a woman who she said she almost got in an accident. So she had to slam in the brakes and she said, poor Toto went flying in her kennel to the front seat, <laughs> you know, and, and things like that, that I never would have thought until I, I was kind of um, taking courses. And I'm like, wow, I need to up my uh, my questioning because I'm only behavior. You know, anything changes in the house. Or I never thought about just the drive in itself. <laughs> 
you know? Well, and mm-hmm. um, when we're talking to our owners, um, try to get in the habit of wording it so that they have to answer with some sort of a sentence. Yes. Don't ask yes, no. Is he good? Yeah. Anything yep. change? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, like, I don't, not that the wife has told me. <laughs> like, yeah, yes, exactly. no. You know? Um, so I know we mentioned things like, you know, life changes and divorces and babies and stuff. I think it's also a good time for us when we notice that someone is expecting a baby to talk to them and say, have you talked to a trainer about preparing your dog for this? Yes. Because there are some things that they, they can really avoid a lot of problems if they spend a little bit of time preparing their dog for a baby in the house, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, or, or, you know, moving or downsizing or before they adopt a cat, you know, and, and like just some, some things that they can think about at least to help them prepare before some of these life changes happen, you know? Yeah. Um, and then people try to do crazy things and sometimes it works out, you know? I mean, like, Oh, we brought our dog on a boat and that worked out. And like, I'm glad it worked out for you. Cause that's, <laughs> <laughs> that, that does not always work out. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was a kid, we, we did a lot of sailing. My, my family were all sailboat people. And a friend used to bring their standard poodle on their sailboat and for two-week vacation with them. And the dog loved it. But, you know, not every dog can handle things like that. And owners will try anyway. Right. Um, yep. Well, it makes, um, it makes a big difference. I've noticed when the parents go away for you know a week at a time and and when i get them directly from a a boarding facility it makes a huge difference um i've always noticed that the dogs tend to get a little nerve more nervous even if i've been grooming them for a while when mom leaves again and it's and there's takes about takes a few minutes a few extra minutes just to settle them in say it's okay you know, no need to worry. I know mom just got back, but she's leaving you again, <laughs> you know, and as a behavior standpoint, um, Chrissy, you can help me with this. What are some things that you notice when it, when dogs tend to come back from their parents being gone for so long and then, and then leaving them is, is there something that you recommend with maybe taking an extra day or two to kind of acclimate before bringing to the groomers and what's what what's your opinion so when i first started grooming i was working in a boarding kennel so we were grooming the dogs before they'd go home Hmm. um and so in that case the grooming for them meant we're going home we're going home we're going home like they were super jazzed up right right um now like from the other angle like working in shops where we're not part of boarding you know I think that it takes a couple of days for a dog to settle back in. Mm-hmm. Um, just like it takes a couple of days for us. I don't know about you guys, but you know, you come home from a vacation and you're not like Monday, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta ease your yeah. way in and it, it just takes them a little bit of time. Right. Um, I know I've mentioned before, but I have my two border collies and one of them, well, both of them have some dog aggression issues and we were away on vacation and had a friend staying at our house to watch them. And that last day of a two week vacation, they got into a fight because they just had had enough. You know, Mm -hmm. they were like, mom's not here and dad's not here and we're frustrated. And, you know, and and one of them ended up getting stitches. They they got into a pretty, pretty significant tussle. Um, But, you know, when you think about like the stress of I've been someplace different and now I'm back home, you don't necessarily just settle in right away. You know? But I find that most of the time people want them groomed quickly because boarding, if they've been boarding someplace, it, it, they, they just they smell taste. money. They smell, yeah. 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 No matter yeah. how good you are about it, they it just smells weird, you know? Right. Yeah. They. Um, I just had one, a doodle that boarded at another facility, then came here for a bath. And yeah, it was, it was fun. <laughs> I yeah. guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, um, my first experience working with dogs was at a boarding kennel and every once in a while they didn't want the bath. So mm. the smell of fresh and clean always, always, always will remind the dogs that didn't get a bath. That just like, got like a little bit of like, we're just going to wet your feet down a little bit and clean up your bum. 
And that was the product that we used. And it'll always, always, always make me think dirty dog. <laughs> yeah. So it feels so great, right? <laughs> this is like me and I'm like, something's masked here. Because you know? right. I was, that you're just doing your best, you know? Yeah. But I think that, um, yeah, I think that some of these dogs are, you know, they're, they're stressed out about things that owners aren't necessarily even thinking about, you know? Right, right. And um, I feel like um, a lot of uh, adult dogs, if they end up having some kind of health issues, you notice changes and not necessarily mean life changing in their home style, but also within, you know, yeah. just like us, we might be starting to wake up. Oh, I'm now achy every joint in my body, but I guess that's life now. But that transition <laughs> from waking up like, oh, I sneezed the wrong way. My back is out for 10 days. You know, versus when you're 20 and you're like, I can keep going for more hours. No big deal. I just fell over snowboarding, but I'll keep going. You yeah. know, dogs feel that as well. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, having to work with them as they age and guiding them through that process, you know, on the yep. table, there's a lot to consider when it comes to an older dog. Well, and that's even before we get into seniors, you know, yes. when I think it's yeah. so obvious once they reach that stage. But, you know, I mean, um, my guys compete in fly ball and every once in a while I'm like, is this too much for you? You know, but they're both nine. It's not like they're old. They're just kind of middle-aged dogs. And I was getting ready to retire one of them, actually the younger of the two. They're, they're, they're only the same age for about two months, <laughs> um, but I was getting ready to retire him and he just changed the way he plays the game. Um, he just decided to turn left instead of turning right when he hits the box. But weird little things that like some ages they're just you just kind of have to keep watching like is this too much for you you know yeah. and also finding out if um if their tolerance level is the same you oh, know that's a, that's are they gonna one. are they gonna sit there and go yeah keep brushing me you know or are they like i swear to god she hits me with that brush one more time <laughs> you know <laughs> like get off my ear lady i just i've had it you know sometimes mm. they just turn into a little grumpy you know but I mean, who knows if that's because their neck is a little sore. You know, I think that we yep. start looking for soreness at that age. And, mm -hmm. and the thing is, is, well, and it, that's one reason, you know, I always ask um, new clients, you know, well, what's the, the age of the dog? And they're like, well, I don't know. Okay, well, what's the approximate age? And I tell them, you know, the reason I need to know is I want to know when I'm going to start looking for arthritis and and aches and pains and everything and things start changing and you know and then they're they're a little more well you know it's about five years old or you know because a lot of times they don't know because they're rescues and they don't know a birthday or whatever but having that general idea and then the other thing is is that when we have these dogs we are seeing seeing these significant changes in behavior mm -hmm. on the you know on the table and we don't know why we need to go back to the basics we need mm -hmm. to go back to the patients you know you know back to if this was their first groom okay right. reteaching re reiterating what what is supposed to be done and work them through that um, right. I think that's really important to go back to the basics when you have a dog on your table that is acting like that. Yeah, right, absolutely. Right. And um, if you see a behavior change, the first thing you should rule out is a physical reason. That's, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Look at health first. Like, wow, you're acting weird. Let's make sure you're healthy. Right, right. That's it. That's it. That's a very good point with it because a lot of it's things that clients don't really take the second to think about you know and i i feel if we if we really are more intensive with the questions and the check-in it's a lot of things that we can avoid to really keep them comfortable while grooming which is very important because keeping them comfortable and kind of catching it as they get something like arthritis or any, you know, pains in their joints and showing them, okay, well, understand now you're starting to develop pain, but let me show you why it's okay. And we'll work with you versus not realizing it. And then the dog's just like, I've had enough. Just like you said, I've had enough. I'm in pain. I'm yeah. done. 
or assuming that it's a behavior problem if they're not standing up, standing straight like they used to, you right. know? Like if we, if we jump to the assumption that it's a behavior problem, we might actually be missing that this dog doesn't stand well on its back leg and you just picked up a front leg, you know? Mm. Think about mm. like, you know, you got four legs, but if one of them is sore, it might be the one that you're picking up that's sore or it might be the right. one you're, they're left standing on, you know, but, but be thinking about all the ways that we can help them be comfortable. Right, right. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I just kind of feel that uh, about every five, every like six months is almost like every five years for us, you know, like six months for a dog and they're, they're a little bit older. You know, like, especially the seniors, like, I, I just noticed that like six months and I'm like, boy, he's really changed than he, since he, since mm -hmm. I saw him, you know, like that, that just, it doesn't take long for changes to start happening, you know? Nope. I don't know about you guys, but that like every five years, I'm like, good God, I've hit another different milestone. <laughs> <laughs> like, this isn't fun. <laughs> yep. You know, like, well, I'm 18. So that was when I was 13, right? Um, right. but, but the, um, the, the amount of time, it doesn't take very long. It doesn't take like two years for things to, to start to change, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and, uh, and taking the consideration, the different breeds and the different lifespan, their adult yeah. life is completely different just because my dog is, you know, 10 years old. And then you have a great Dane that's, you know, nine years old. This, those are completely different <laughs> right the, you know? the maltese that's 18 you know and there are other dogs that are never going to reach 18 right right they're they're long seniors <laughs> once they reach well, 18 and they, and they used to talk about that seven years is dog years thing and it's kind right. of been blown out of proportion well, know, they, like, and they, now they have a wheel that yeah. you know, goes by the size of dog and yeah yeah because I think like people are very rigid about that. Like nobody's saying that your dog is 77, but you know, like they're like, oh, he's 77, you know, like that's nah, not really how it works. But, but it does, you know, give you an estimate a little bit anyway. Mostly mm -hmm. that's about how they develop because at a year old, they look like they're adults and they're not. They're like little kids still. At two, right. they look like adults and they're not, you know. And when we talk about adulthood, that could be anywhere from like two two years old, three years old. My border collies really, it, these two and my last two didn't really hit their adult stride till five. Um, you know, every breed's going to be a little bit different, but. Right, right. And uh, let's see, Amber's on here. Hello, Amber. Hi, Amber. Definitely have noticed a lot of anxiety in the past few weeks while your eight has been doing a new business build out in weather and anxiety. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. New stuff happening. Some dogs roll with that and think it's exciting and others are really mm -hmm. stressed by it. You right. know, but even changing um, your grooming salon, sorry, Chrissy, but the changes in your grooming salon when there's like, wait a second, I usually go over here now I'm over, over in the front door. What's going on. I'm not sure now and how I should behave. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think people people can relate to that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, part of what I like about house call is that no two days are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So I can pretty quickly roll with it. Like, oh, my equipment's over here on my left. Oh, next the next right. appointment, my right. equipment's on my right. You know, um, I, I just like that. But then there are people who are like, I don't think it is all the time. I like my rigid structure. And, you know, there's just as much variety with us, too. Right, right. So um, something about anxiety too. Um, if a dog is really anxious or if they're really under stress, it doesn't just go away because they're having a good day. Um, anxiety and stress are chemical reactions in your body. Like if they have an adrenaline rush and they're all worked up or cortisol levels and stuff, it's not like um, a day off or a day at the spa is going to necessarily make them feel like, oh, this is a nice relaxing day. Like they, they kind of need some downtime if something is stressing them out. Okay. It can affect them for hours to days, even after whatever it was was over. So sometimes the owners are like, oh, yeah, I mean, but they were jackhammering yesterday. That right. wasn't today. That that was over yesterday. Or, yeah, we had thunderstorms last night that rolled through and a couple branches fell, but everything's fine now. 
But those dogs could be really stressed out the next day because, you know, it's a chemical reaction. Your body is trying to protect you from scary things. So if you think it's scary, you know, your body has this chemical reaction to try to get you safe. So sometimes owners aren't thinking about what kind of things are, are scaring their dogs or making them anxious and kind of assume the event is over, so everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, is don't be so set in getting the dog done that to be afraid to call a owner and say, you know what, today's not a good day for yes. the dog. Yep. Let's go ahead and um, call it for today have you bring them back, kind of do a reset and then start over. And then, right. you know, because we don't want to put, keep pushing the dog if they're having a lot of anxiety or if they're just off for some reason. Right. Right. Yeah. And then, as a house call, as a house call groomer, there are times where um, uh, I have a new customer and I'm like, okay, you can't let them go hide under the bed or something because if they go and hide, now they're all worked up before I even start touching them. I'm like, yeah, we're not going to groom today. <laughs> you know, right, like right. we're going to have to reschedule that because he went off and he hid under the bed. And even if I were to pull him out from under the bed, he's all worked up. He's all stressed out. That's not a good thing to do. We can take him out, give him some cookies, reschedule, you know. Yep. Right. And, and you know, one, uh, one big thing of mine is um, it, because you'll get those dogs that are off and they bite and then they've never bitten before. They don't, you don't know why, you know, and you call the owner, you say, you know, well, this happened and this is in a, this is very unusual. And so the dog's already bit. We're stopping right now. The minute that a dog is unusually biting that you need to stop at mm -hmm. that point. Do not continue at all. And be okay with it. Yep. Vet check. Yeah. 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 Start with the vet and, check at that point. Dara, yeah. which is kind of funny. Um, she's in our comments today. Uh, hello, Dara. Um, she's <laughs> saying, how about new addition to the family? You know, we went over um, having new um, a new addition, like babies coming in, but also a new puppy. A new new puppy, puppy. Cat. But we can think about getting married and then that significant other brings more kids to the house. That's another thing. Might not necessarily well, be the babies. significant other suddenly is in the house, and oh, you know, yeah, yeah, dog has to share his bed with some other person. You know? Right, right, and yeah. that that can be. That's those are huge changes. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, a lot of the times, I one of the questions I asked with grooming, and I started asking was when I see a um, uh, a someone with an engagement ring. I always ask, oh, did you have a wedding yet? You know, did you guys buy a house? It, you know, kind of ask questions of their life. And it kind of, um, you know, it's like feeds two birds with one scone. Um, it gives me a nice conversation with the owners, but it also gives me an insight. What are the new changes that's going on in their lifestyle? You know, that I might have to prepare myself without kind of poking at the owner with asking these questions, you know, about the yeah. dogs. So I'm interested in their life. And they're very excited to speak to me about this new thing going on. And then I can say, ah, your dog's going to be very nervous. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I got and the this. thing is, is too, is it's not just that, you know, maybe that new person comes in or something. You have, um, you have, if you have like somebody who's engaged, their, their feelings are changing. Their yes. yep. emotions are changing. And just that is going to throw a dog completely off. Right, right. It's just because of the change, you know, if if somebody in the house is, you know, started going through depression or, mm. you know, anything like that, because of the change in their mental state, there's going to be a change in the dog too. Right, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. and... Mindy, thank you for um, saying that because that actually just gave me a huge, even bigger understanding. I never considered people's emotional status. You know, that has a huge impact. If mom all of a sudden is crying all the time or she's angry all the time, that is a huge change for the dogs. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's something that you're absolutely right. That's something we should be watching for. If we see that there's a death in the family and, you know, even though they, mm -hmm. they don't live in the house, but mom's now really sad. It takes a while for them to get over it. But where people are angry, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 There are a lot of weird life changes. And, and I think that um, sometimes people don't notice that the dog is having a hard time. Right. Know? Right. So, unfortunately so the other thing about that too, that I, uh, just thinking about it too, is that um, sometimes when people are super, super sad, they actually kind of lean in on their dog, mm. you know, like that the dog becomes like this source of comfort. And in many ways that's really good, but some dogs are stressed out by that. Right. You know, mm -hmm. um, I can some tell dogs you, uh, need some happy. Right. When, um, when we had, when I had uh, my horse passing, it took me a long time to kind of get through that. And I was very upset and my dog didn't like it. She actually kept away from me. She didn't want to be anywhere near me because of it. And the second I kind of got out of that, all of a sudden here comes Sue, like, oh, you're normal again. I love you, you know? But when I was upset with that loss, she couldn't handle it. She was actually just scared of everything all of a sudden. And she didn't want to Aww. snuggle. She didn't, she couldn't, when she was walking, she was on the edge and, you know, and then I, I would send someone else to groom her and they're like, oh my gosh, she's so difficult today. And I'm like, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Had I known years ago that that's a huge impact in dog's life, you know, hmm. that that's a, that's a valid point. Well, and uh, I think too, as groomers, we also need to think about if we see stuff like that happening, you know, like, is there a trainer we can send these people to? Yes. Yes. You know, like, hey, your dog could probably use a little bit of help with this, right. you know? You guys are, yeah. you guys are going to have to restructure this, you know, right. kids and, are kids and dogs don't necessarily get along without help right? You know, fine, or whatever is going on, you know, new boyfriends or, you know, a lot of dogs are like, whoa, why is this new guy here all the time? You know, yeah. um, and a lot of owners um, will see things that dogs do as jealousy and start trying to punish it away. And it turns into even worse angst and unpleasantness, you know, and, right, right. you know, they, it's, it's good for us to be thinking like, I think you need some help with this. You know, right. a yep. lot of groomers think dog training is obedience classes, but there's a lot more to dog training. Yep. Uh, and groomer Jen. Oh, uh, thank you, Dara. Um, and then uh, Diana. Yeah. I started using feed two birds with one scone because I'm trying to be more positive in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. But uh, Boomer Jen, she was saying, did you say there's a trainer directory for each state? Um, so a lot of the organizations have trainer directories for each state. Um, I know that um, I have my certifications through the Certification Council for Professional Dog Trainers, and they have listings for each state. Um, the Association of Pet Dog Trainers has listings for each state. Um, International Association of uh, animal behavior consultants has um, directories. Um, mostly you just kind of, you know, see if you can meet up with a trainer, you know, and kind of get to know them. I think we should be doing more of that anyway. Trainers and groomers don't understand each other's jobs and we should be doing more of that anyway. But, um, but yeah, help them, help them find a good trainer to help them through whatever issue they're having. And mm -hmm. trainers, um, trainers are a lot like groomers. You know, you're going to have a trainer who specializes in stuff the same way you would have a groomer who's like, oh, this is the person I want to send you to for color. This is the person I want to send you to for hand stripping, you know, mm -hmm. um, just help them find the right person. My poor husband is specialized in German shepherds at this point. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, we, we get so many German shepherds. They're so temperamental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They, they can you be so overly sensitive and then, <laughs> you know, yeah, they, I mean, they are, you talk about a little change making a big effect. German Shepherds are are one breed that a little tiny change is going to make a huge impact on them. Yeah, yeah. Border Collies are usually like that too. A lot of the herding dogs are, but mm -hmm. I'm just trying to, I, there are a couple of things that I want my dogs to always assume are always going to be the same. Um, and then there are other things I'm like, no, I don't want you to fixate on any particular routine. Mm -hmm. you know? um, it's really easy to fall into that. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I can add stuff in the comments. If not, I can do it afterward, but I can, I can add links for you, Groomer Jen. 
Um, I might have to do it after the recording's over and do it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I think that's how I do that. Um, yep. So separation stress. Dara asks how others are dealing with separation stress since people have started going back to work. You know, I I think that um, I'm not really seeing seen a lot of it. I haven't been seeing a lot of it either. I think they they the message got out there that they should be like slowly adapting to helping their dogs get used to being alone, you know? Um, now, on the other hand, I have seen an increase in like, um, I have a family that got another poodle and now that puppy, if I take the ones, the older standard poodle away, that dog is flipping out. It yeah. is, I mean, trying to jump, you know, if it, if it gets near the tub, try to jump in the tub with it, trying, if it gets in the drying room, trying to jump in the, on the drying table. And, you know, I, the, these are two that I've done for, since they were puppies. And the one I just let, cause he's actually, I have his litter mate. So I let him run around with his brother while he's yeah. here. And I've had to kennel the other one because he just, the separate, and I talked to the owner, I'm like, you need to give them separate time from each other. You know, right. they're not, they're not worried about being separated from you. They're being, they're worried about being separated from each other. Right. 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 Well, I think I a do. lot of people use their second dog as a babysitter. Like, oh, good. Those two will just keep each other amused right. all day. Right. That's exactly yeah. what I was just going to say. Now, um, I do want to circle back a little bit because when the pandemic started, so I started grooming in Portsmouth kind of towards, I guess, when we were kind of freeing up and the restrictions weren't as bad. Um, I did see quite a few dogs uh, extremely nervous being separated from from mom. Um, it hasn't happened in a while, but I did see it at the first, in the beginning of it. It, it was something that dogs that I've groomed for a long time, all of a sudden mom's home for the whole half a year, a year, and then mom goes off to work. And all of a sudden they're like, oh my God. And they shook the whole time, you know, grooming. And mm -hmm. um, it took me a couple grooms for them to, you know, be okay with it. And what I did with them is have them come just for, hey, cookies and pats, go back home. Cookies and pats. And I tell them, hey, if you just happen to drive by, stop in, we'll give you a treat. And then you can just leave. And that's how I've worked with them, Dara. Um, but I haven't seen that in a long time. Do you have a question um, for you, Lori? Sure. Was that also when they were in a new setting? Were these dogs that used to get groomed at your shop and now they're in a new setting and on top of that? Like, I think sometimes we have more things going yeah, on all at that once. Is a, that is a valid point. I can tell you one of them, it was definitely a new setting. The other ones were people who've already been coming oh, to, okay. uh, to the salon. But that's a very valid point. You know, having, switching, you know, seeing the same groomer, but in a completely new environment. You know, that's something I never thought of. That's a, that's a big one right there. Well, and I you think, know, you know, it's all gathering clues. Sometimes right. we don't really know what makes them tick, but you start gathering like, okay, what's the big mm. picture, you know? Yeah, what yeah that's going on? fabulous. Now, mm -hmm. um, Amber here mm -hmm. is, she says uh, she, has an, she has an employee who mm -hmm. projects her emotions terribly on the dogs. How can she help curve these negative emotions away from the dog? Um, I can go last in this one. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing that we do is that um, everybody seems to be in a happier mood when music's playing. Mm. Yeah. So we have music going in our shop, okay, to kind of keep things upbeat, kind of, you know, when it's, it's hard to be, you know, in a bad mood when music's going. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that we, we do. Um, and, you know, I... And I have to say, I'm I'm kind of blessed that I learned very early in my grooming career to not let my emotions mm -hmm. take over. Right. And um, because that that in in there's some groomers that you know there's some groomers that just can't do that. Right. And at that point, you know, as a shop owner, when I had employees. 
I've had to send people home because yes. I'm like, you are not in the right frame of mind to do this today. Right. You need to go home, kind of take care of yourself, take care of you, your, your, take care of your things and then come in and do a reset the same way we do with the dog. You know, I said mm -hmm. to do with the dogs. Um, and when you do that a couple of times, they start to think, okay, you know, maybe, you know, they think about the way that they, they are projecting onto the dog. Okay. Cause there's times too that I will, um, I've had somebody who's been in a bad mood and I'm like, okay, stop, take a deep breath. And then if they can't reset that way, um, I've taken their dog. I switch dogs with them. Yes. Yep. And then the dog, they see, well, the dog's behaving for you because I don't have the emotion involved that you did. Mm -hmm. You were involving emotion. Extremely important. And you have to point all that out to that person in order to get them to see how it is affecting the dog when they do that. Right, right. Yeah. And um, yeah. it, it, it's something that's, it's hard leaving emotions at the door, exactly like Daryl yeah. was saying. Um, it's a well, necessary the, skill, but it's, it, it's hard. And to teach that, it takes some time. Yeah. Exactly. And sometimes it's, um, it's they're, they're having this emotion that, you know, they're, they're frustrated and stuff. But we should probably also address the people who um, find themselves in a situation that reminds them of a time when they were hurt. You know, right. like if you've been bit by a dog or something and that the dog on your table gives you a little bit of a side eye. And I know for a lot of groomers, they're sort of like, you know, they kind of freeze up and those can be hard to work through, too. You know, you got to um, just kind of relax while you groom and take one, your time. One thing that was told to me many, many, many years ago, and I tell my groomers is you know, when they're getting frustrated with the dog, the dog's giving them a hard time. I tell them the dog's not giving you a, a hard time. The dog is having a hard time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. you need to help that dog not have such a hard time of it. That's right. what you're, that's what you're here for. And that was the, you know, the biggest thing for me is that, realizing that you know the dog's not there to give you a hard time the dog is having a hard time with what it's going through mm -hmm. yeah right yep. and uh, well, as, oh, go ahead good <laughs> well, i was saying a lot with being a shop owner and a manager um knowing that you have a groomer who can who is emotional can project her emotions learning about that particular groomer and what they can and can't handle and making sure things are getting scheduled accordingly can be key. Um, I personally like to see how everyone grooms and I'm very careful with the type of dogs they can, th that they react with on the table. If I know they, for instance, just because it's an easier subject, puppies, not everyone can groom puppies. You know, not everyone can has the patience to do, to do that. And I make sure, oh, I have a puppy schedule on so-and-so. So let me move some things around. Um, my biggest thing too, um, what I love to do is when I see them starting to get worked up and usually you can notice the cheeks. The cheeks get red a little bit when a person's getting kind of flustered. When I start seeing that and they kind of tensed, I'm like, hey, why don't let's, let's take a break real quick. Let's put the dog down. And if you don't want to make it like um, telling them to uh, put the dog down because you're being a little bit ridiculous because they might not be able to emo emotionally handle that, I just say, hey, let's put the dog down real quick. Come, come look at this. I have a question, you know, and just kind of get them distracted and then, you know, give them water and some kind of food. Sometimes they need extra electrolytes and sugar, you know, in their body. But um, <laughs> I like to distract them in a positive way, especially when someone can't handle being criticized and then they just get oh, well, oh my God, I'm doing a bad job and now I'm all in my head and now I'm even more emotional, mm. you know? In my in my system, um, I actually, you'll, you, we have icons that, you know, 
this is a Amanda only dog or yes. a Mindy only dog or no, Mindy does not do this dog or, mm -hmm. you know, we have those with notes and it's, it's, you know, dog prefers this groomer because right. they do that, you know, dogs have personalities too. And guess what? Personalities, whether they're dog or human, they can clash. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Can. Yeah. Well, if there's a dog that just doesn't prefer me, I'm okay with it. Right, right. No, don't take it personal. Just no, no, not do at it, all. Do it, let the person that the dog is comfortable with do the dog. Right. And um, so, you know, we have all those little icons that will let them know, hey, don't don't schedule this one for me. This one has to be scheduled under Amanda. And we so having that kind of system too helps for frustration and things because they're you know the dogs are the ones that they're they're they like to work with right 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 and in yeah. our system we have pop-ups you can just kind of put a pop-up and it, and so before they even book it says only with so and so or needs to be done in a quiet day you know do not book when there's x y and z you know, and, and that will help um, create the environment that not only does the dog need, the groomer needs as well, you yeah. know, but I'm a big yeah. fan of breaks. Um, I used to be a straight through groomer, in and out, let's go in and out, you know, make sure the dog is still in good quality, but I want it in and out. And the more you learn about behavior, the more I realize how much dogs can really benefit from just taking just a moment. It doesn't mean you have to put your dog away completely, you know, but just stopping, you know, brushing that lip hair and going back to what they like, you know, the legs or the tail, you know, something different. And it's just giving them that break will really help benefit not only yourself, but also the dog. Yeah. Yeah. And also, um, if you have somebody who gets kind of emotional, you know, it might be worthwhile to kind of start like talking about what parts of what, what things stress you out. Mm -hmm. You know, like, let's, let's talk about what stresses you out. Like, what, what is it? Is it like when you have a dog that you, you've got to do that last half hour worth and the owner is on their way? Like, is mm -hmm. that, is it the time frame that stresses you out? Is it the amount right. of work? Is it the amount of sound? Maybe earplugs is enough to, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm not wearing ear protection, the sound starts stressing me out a little bit because it's right. quite loud, you know? Right. Um, but then also there's a point where, you know, take a break and maybe play with one of the dogs that you like. That was yep, one of the yep. best pieces of advice I got when I first started. Like, okay, once in a while, if you get start finding yourself getting stressed out, take a break and maybe just take one of the dogs out for a piddle. One of the mm -hmm. ones that you know, <laughs> yep, yep. recalibrate and get back focused on, no, I groom because I like dogs. Right. You and know? I, and uh, I, I also agree with groomer Jen as well. Um, you know, we should all be close enough to each other when we're working together as a team that they shouldn't, we shouldn't take it as an insult. You know, if I'm with you, Mindy, and you tell me, Lori, you need to, you, why don't you take a break for a second? You know, let me help you. You know, I should be leaving that ego like, well, no, I, I can do this myself for you. You know, I've been doing this for a while. No, take the second to break. It's like, you know what? Yeah, I need a break. And I'm okay with the break and I'm going to accept it because I need to better myself and, and make sure the dog is in, in, a, in a good environment as well. That, that's, yeah. it, we should be working as a team, even whether you're paid commission, you're booth rental, whatever you are, you're still yeah. in the same room together. Yep. Yeah. It still reflects on everybody in the room. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Gosh, and customers well, notice it. Yes. Customers notice it. They notice a happy workplace, mm -hmm. you know? I had a, a client who said, I love coming here. I feel like you guys lay out the red carpet, <laughs> you know, and we want to hear that. We want to hear that from my clients. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's really nice when you have dogs who you have behavior cases or anyway in their adulthood and you get them through whatever challenges. It, it's mm -hmm. very rewarding. Yeah. Well, ladies, we've reached the hour mark. This was a great topic. It ended fast. Definitely getting used to uh, being a host here, which is different, but very You're doing exciting. great. 
<laughs> thank yep. you so much. Well, I wanted to extend a big thank you to everyone who takes the time to watch us. Um, we really value your opinion and really like to take the time to talk and feel free to always reach out to us. We try to be available as much as possible, day, night, you know, eventually we'll get to you. You know, if you send me a message in the middle of the night, I will get to you the next morning. <laughs> but um, it's it's a pleasure to, to speak with you and trying to get close in the grooming community. And we- Lucy's we on. Lucy's on. What? Yes. Oh, hello. Lucy's is on. Is she on her horse while she's doing this? <laughs> Susie got a horse a week ago. Like, I'm yes. not surprised to see Susie on. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies, thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for everyone who's uh, been with us throughout the years. And uh, we're looking forward to your next Monday. Um, thank you again. And, and next week, I think...